Welcome back. We're going to continue our discussion on uh, organic reactions. And as I said in the last video, the purpose of it was just to introduce the idea of a free radical and the three major steps involved. Okay, here we are actually going to take that knowledge and actually synthesize alkyl halides. And what did I say is alkyl halides? It's basically when you combine alkanes and halogens, you produce alkyl halides. And I've already introduced the idea of radical reaction, but let's recap what is a radical. An element with odd electron, okay? So here is an alkane, and we're gonna react it with, as I said, Br2 and light. And H nu is known as light. Now you can carry out the exact same reaction with the following combinations. Cl2, H nu, I2 and H nu, and F2 and H nu. Now, if, you, if any of you have not seen the bottle in which Br2 or I2 is stored, it's stored in a really dark brown bottle because the moment they come in contact with H nu, they generate free radicals and they react pretty quickly. So the brown bottle prevents them from uh, not reacting all the time. They only have to react when they have to, okay? Very good, so let's keep moving. Um, if you start this reaction, as I said, first the Br2, which is written this way, reacts with light, and as I said, each Br gets broken in two pieces, and when, it, when the one bond gets broken in two pieces, you use half arrows, not full arrows, and in the process, you produce two Br radical, okay? And one of the Br radical reacts with the compound, which I'm gonna write it again here, okay? Now, it it's generally starts from one end and work its way up for, to the other end. It doesn't matter which end you wanna start. As I said, this is a methyl group, right? So we're going to, if you want, for now, this is gonna react with Br2, that's what I have written, right? How about let's, for now, draw it as our uh, structure that contains, you know, that you're familiar with. Once you get comfortable with it, then you do not have to do this, okay? Again, I'm going to write this as, instead of CH3, I'm going to write it as CH2H. Now, in the process, we have generated two Br2, right? So, one of the Br dot reacts with this hydrogen, and again, this bond gets broken in two pieces. So what we are really generating from here is, we are going to generate, I'm gonna write this in brackets, okay, so that you know that this is how it's, it was made. CH3, CH, CH3, write everything, and just write a dot on the CH2. Don't write a dot on the hydrogen, plus, H dot, that's what you have produced. In this, what's within the bracket, this is what you have produced. Now the H dot reacts with the Br dot. Now whenever a free radical reacts, you don't write full arrows, you write half arrows. This H dot is this H dot, okay? I'm trying to keep things as separated as possible to alleviate any confusion. So when two free radicals generate, they produce a bond again. And in the process, we have this sitting by itself, okay, dot. Now, if you remember, we produced two Br dot. Only one of them reacted initially to grab this hydrogen from the molecule, which means there's still one more Br left. And the second Br dot reacts again. Again, you don't write full arrows, you write half arrows. And in the process, you produce an alkyl halide, which basically means now the Br is attached to this CH2. Now, this is one of the products that's possible, but as I said, once you get here, you know this is a primary free radical, right? 
primary radicals are less stable and less reactive. So instead of this reaction happening here, it could have, we could have think of it this way. So CH3, CH, CH3, C, H, let's write this H this way and leave the rest of them intact. Now, this hydrogen could have reacted with, this is why this is a less efficient method because you cannot really control which product to form. You make all of these. So this is the least stable. Why? Because this is generated from a CH2 dot. Let's say instead of this hydrogen from this carbon, say this one has broken in two pieces, okay? Then you end up with this, right? C dot and CH3, CH3, what happens to this hydrogen? Well, that's going to react with the other DR dot like I did earlier. I cannot keep doing this every single time. You just have to understand it, okay? HBR. Now this now reacts with another BR dot to make, as I said, this is half arrow. So this leads to this as a product. Now you kind of guessed where I'm going with all this, right? You should be good at reading patterns. Now this is a, what type of radical is this? Don't worry about where we started with, where we end with. This is a tertiary free radical, right? So this is definitely the most stable. We're not worried about where we started, or where we end with. We said this is, primary radical because this contains two hydrogens. This is a tertiary free radical because it contains no hydrogens, right? It's attached to three bonds and none of them is hydrogen. So if a carbon contains three bonds and the fourth is not a hydrogen, then that's tertiary. If it contains one hydrogen, that's secondary. If it contains two, that's primary, right? So this is the most stable, right? Now, we did this hydrogen, right? You can also do this hydrogen instead. And so it's essentially the same process. So let's go to the next page. Now, let me actually do this over here because I, that's a practice problem I want you to do. Now you have to watch this particular video more than once. So C, I'm gonna write this bond as this way and then leave the rest as it is. It's basically you are making different combinations on where the BR dot should react. Now this bond can break into two pieces, right? It's only the CH bond. You see the never the CCH3 bond is breaking, right? So that means you'd be left with almost the same thing as the previous case. You're left with this, right? We've already looked at these combinations. So which means this would react with the BR dot, right? And again, two free radical. This again leads to, I'm gonna write the product here. I'm trying to do it all in one screen so that you're not going to, I'm trying to keep the video also short. So we now have the BR attached here. Make sure you don't add too many bonds because you cannot violate the rule of carbon having five bonds. You see, this is also a tertiary alkyl halide, right? Plus, obviously you produced HBr here. So the H dot here react with one of the Br dot you produced. So you produced HBr as well. But the most important thing is this. So this is also a tertiary alkyl halide because the radic, the carbon containing the radical does not have a hydrogen, right? So that's tertiary, so that's also more stable. So what I want you to do is, for all this, this compound, okay? Write all possible combinations, all possible products actually would be a better word, okay? And in each case, I want you to identify identify whether the radical on the carbon, like I did in the carbon, 
is primary, secondary, or tertiary. Okay? I want you to identify all possible products. You will have a, you'll have a field experience. You'll have a field day doing this, okay? So do as many as you can and tell me and then write the products as well. So you're not only identifying, write all possible products, and then identify whether the radical in the carbon is primary, secondary, or tertiary. Be very clear, I will be seeing this on your My Thoughts to make sure you actually have achieved this result because this is very, very important, okay? And also, um, I guess that's all I want you to do. So this is how you synthesize an alkyl halide from an alkane by reacting an alkane with a halogen using a free radical mechanism. Okay, now this looks like a lot on the screen, but if you actually watch the video, things only appear one at a time. All right, so practice this problem and I'll see you with another video.